Hello guys, in this video we'll, we are talking about the comparison of the pathways of gluconeogenesis and the glycolysis. Now we can see here from this fructose 6-phosphate and the whole process of making the glycolysis and gluconeogenesis which is a pretty complex pathway. Now we have seen most of the steps are uh, just a reversal of each other so in both these cases but fewer steps which are denoted here with this red color that means these steps are totally different from the glucose uh, or for the glycolysis and uh, gluconeogenesis. Glucose can be synthesized from non-carbohydrate precursors in a process called gluconeogenesis. This occurs when the body has exhausted its supply of glucose and glycogen. Many of the steps are simply a reversal of the glycolytic pathway, but some are different. Starting from the pyruvate, the first step backwards to pr pr produce phosph phosphoenol pyruvate would be highly energetic. In gluconeogenesis, two different enzymes are used to produce phosphoenol pyruvate from pyruvate. The first is called pyruvate for pyruvate carboxylase. These enzymes add a carbon dioxide or a one carbon group to this pyruvate to make it uh, oxaloacetate. It will produce this four carbon molecule which is oxaloacetate here. The second enzyme is called phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase or PEPCK. It decarboxylates oxaloacetate and phosphorylates the intermediate to produce phosphoenol pyruvate. So the two step reaction, one is the decarboxylation and the second step is the phosphorylation. This step it needs GTP hydrolysis for this reaction. Uh, not hydrolysis actually the phosphate is taken from this GTP. And the previous step we need ATP for the same kind of reactions. From phosphoenol pyruvate which is called PEP in short to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate the glycolytic enzyme operate near equilibrium. This means that if the concentration of phosphoenol pyruvate increases, if the concentration of this uh, PEP increases, the reactions will be driven in the reverse of glycolysis to produce fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Now six enzymes shown here participate in both glycolysis and gluconeogenesis at the same time. Okay, it's just the shifting of the equilibrium. The final steps in gluconeogenesis involves one, uh, one isomerization and two dephosphorylation steps. The isomerization step is catalyzed by the glycolytic enzyme, but the other two steps use different enzymes. In glycolysis, phosphorylation of the sugar is achieved by ATP hydrolysis, making the overall reaction uh, in ex exergonic and energy driven. In gluconeogenesis, two different phosphatases catalyze the exergonic dephosphorylation de steps, releasing phosphate. The first enzyme is called fructose bisphosphate, which is converting this fructose 1,6 bisphosphate into fructose 6 phosphate. And the job of this enzyme is to chop off the phosphate group from fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. The next step is the isomerization of fructose 6 phosphate to glucose 6 phosphate which is catalyzed by the glu glycolytic enzyme phos uh, phosphoglucose isomerase. The last step, the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to glucose, is catalyzed by the glucose 6-phosphatase. Again, the enzyme machinery is similar like this fructose 1,6-phosphatase. Now, this phosphatase enzyme utilizes hydrolysis power to, to drag this phosphate group out from this glucose 6-phosphate to finally produce glucose. Okay, now this glucose 6-phosphate is an enzyme found in only in the liver and the kidney. 